we talk about intimacy, it's like you really being into your mate, into yeah. mate, yeah. right? Like, yeah. so you are yeah. being closer to them. So whether that is, it's almost like being emotionally naked. The, around the average person, you're going to have clothes on or at least some drawers in the beater, right? But when you can be butt naked, fully expose your heart to that other person, yeah. right? So it's like, so, so here's the problem in a lot of relationships. You'll see your spouse naked physically, but not emotionally. Welcome to Hardly Initiated, where real men talk real shit. Your host, Tyshawn Jackson, tuned in for a very special episode, y'all, with my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Yo, so I'm, I'm feeling today, man, it's like we on a roll, bro. Like, the, the mics is flaming, the guest is lit. This is this about to be a good one. This is a very yeah. different episode. Y'all can't see what's going on on the other side of the camera, but it's about nine Negroes staring at us <laughs> while we do this show. Live studio. And, live, and live audience. And I'm super excited about this because it's about to be straight ministry with the brothers that we got mm. on the platform here today. Because to put these brothers together, first of all, me and Ryan, we've been plotting on this for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've been plotting on this it's, for it's, a while. It's, it's been a few months, at least. Oh, it's been at brewing least. and it's yeah. been stewing, but we pulled it off, y'all. Mm. Somehow, we got one of the greatest motivational speakers sitting next to one of the most powerful vo voices of multiple generations mm -hmm. now at this point. Y'all, look, look at these brothers right here. We rocking with Tim Ross. Mm. And Jeremy Anderson oh, at the same. <laughs> Let's go. At the same. Let's go. Damn. Yeah. 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 Let's go. How y'all boys feeling? We chilling. Man, blessed. Chilling, bro. We Honored here to be here. Let's build. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. we knew it would be some synergy with y'all, man. And oh, the thing sure. is, you know, when we we put out the content, right? We get mm -hmm. feedback from the guys and from the men. And y'all are two of the guys that we had on the show that the men and women say the same exact thing. Hmm. Yeah. The men are like, yo, I want to be a man like that. The women are like, I need a man like that. Wow. That's a fact. So, yeah. Turn her a... to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you forget. Just in case you forget. Right. And hey, listen, I, I, I'm going to let you guys know, we've, we've, touched, <laughs> we've touched on the spectrum of marriage, but it's a couple spots that we missed out on. Okay. And it's a couple spots that have a lot to do with whether or not you're going to have a successful marriage. Hmm. Based upon just the statistics in divorce, a lot of things cause divorce. And one of the biggest things, and by the way, we didn't even tell these brothers what they're coming in here walking into. They're about to find out right Surprise. now. Surprise. Mm -hmm. right. One of the biggest things and That's problems that a lot of men and women are having in their marriages is sex. Mm -hmm. They're not, I'm hearing so many guys, I'm talking about in our DMs, I'm talking about guys that are communicating to us in private. They're having sexless marriages. Mm -hmm. Whether they know it or not, they're not pleased, they're not fulfilled, they're wanting to go outside of their marriage. Mm -hmm. Cheating is pretty much, we had, I mean, Judge Lynn told us, cheating is attached to almost every divorce that's, that, that's popping off. That's a, that's a normal thing that's popping off. So we gotta figure out and talk about this issue mm -hmm. because I first wanna pop it off here because when we talk about, we, we talk about it's important to have a healthy sex life. Mm -hmm as it relates to a marriage. But first, what is that? E what is a healthy sex life? What does that even mean when we say a healthy sex life? Yeah, well, first of all, every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like Lar Larsa Pippen, what she was saying. She was had, had, sex, had, to have, had to have sex four times a day, yes. every day. Larsa Sunday, Pippen was getting Monday, it in. Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, 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 Saturday, 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 Sunday. Yeah. No, okay, to me. so, so, um, a healthy marriage is a subjective statement. Mm. You are dealing with two people at a time. Mm -hmm. And to even cookie cutter what a healthy marriage looks like, generally, you will screw up more marriages than you will actually mm -hmm. fix. So when you ask that question... I can't even give you a cookie cutter answer, right? What does what uh, a healthy sex life look like in a marriage? Jeremy said every day. For another couple, it may be three times a week. I have some very close friends. If they have sex six times a year, they're, they're, they're rabbits. Right. They, wow. they are two of the most low-libidoed people <laughs> I have ever met in my life. Are they happy rabbits? 
very happy. They are very affectionate with each other. You would think they are on each other all the time. Okay, how they, long have they been married for? 20 something years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, married, they married over 20 years. Actually, they married 24 years because we've been married 24 years this year. And they got married three months after we did. So, yeah, they'll be married 24 mm -hmm. years this mm -hmm. year as well. Now, Juliet and I, we, when I get home <laughs> <laughs> last night, right. tomorrow, right. like like as much as she can, I will. She had you know to, what I'm saying? She, she had to empty the tank for you. I, hit, will, before not, you hit I will not deny her, right? right. I, I will not deny <laughs> her defraud her. I'm, I'm just here. To, I'm just here to serve. Yeah. But but I wanna I wanna flip this because I know I know we get a we we got we get a lot of male energy here. We got a lot of male energy right here. Yeah. So I'm gonna represent for the females. I'm gonna be the female advocate. Uh, on this pod right now and say that most married women don't like the sex they are getting from their husbands. Mm. Mm. I'm going to just let that marinate just real like quick. That. Don't hurt their pride real quick. Mm. Yeah. All these dudes out here talking about my wife won't do this, my wife won't do that. The average woman is not satisfied with the sex that she is receiving from her husband. Why is that? Because... This dude doesn't even know what she wants and mm -hmm. is too lazy to find out. Mm -hmm. And all of his sexual information is usually coming from porn and not from communication with her. Mm -hmm. Or from previous relationships. That too. And, and Jeremy, let me ask you this, because um, I want you to chime in on this too. What should be the goal for sex in a, in a marriage? A oneness closeness you know what i'm saying you leave your you leave your family to cleave to connect right and so the ultimate goal should be oneness do the, the hand level. gesture again <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah yeah just lay it together when you're just, at home i, mean, I don't know sure if that was that. just like subconscious or not <laughs> yeah, you, was like, was, you need to leave <laughs> <laughs> you just made it global praise god so uh, <laughs> so the goal is you know what i'm saying it's, it's for the two to become one and so if you think it's like a Lego is like fitting together, right? It's like the two become one. And so uh, the highest level of intimacy, mm -hmm. right? I was with, a, I was with um, some marriage coaches of mine a few months ago, and they was working with me and my wife with some stuff. And they was like, hey, you know, Tracy, you're the only person that can meet Jeremy's needs. And I was like, that's not true. She's the only person that should meet my needs. Mm. But like, don't get it twisted. There's that's some other people true. out here that's very able and willing, right? Oh, now, yeah. she's the only person I want to. She's the only person that I will allow to. But the reality is, it's, it's we humans, right? That's right. So that the highest level of intimacy. But the point you mentioned about how different people, they got different sex drives. You know what I'm saying? Their bandwidth to sex, their desire for sex, their age, how long they've been married, what's the sex like, what's going on in their personal lives. There are some seasons where my wife might be dealing with depression or she might be dealing with some health challenges. And there might be some seasons where she's feeling great and she's feeling sexy. Like, you, you got to kind of just fit within there, right? That's right? So I tell people all the time, you, you want to be as selfless as possible mm -hmm. because your focus should be on pleasing that person. Mm -hmm. You want to have the best sex life in your marriage. Mm -hmm. The husband's sole goal should be what you need, mm -hmm. how you want. Want mm -hmm. me to get my face dirty? What do mm -hmm. you need me to do? How can I most please you? The wife should be like, okay, that's cool, but I'm finna out please you. That's when you got fireworks in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. For sure. Wow. So uh, you talked about, you that know, good, uh, your wife could be going through something, right? You, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't gonna leave. You. I, I wasn't gonna let it happen. I saw it, and I didn't know if it was. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I used to. Right, we shouldn't have did it, right? We, we doing this this whole time here. Yeah. <laughs> Cause how we found it here. We got even dead from the floor. Pause. Pause. So okay, let me tell you this real quick. So I, this is actually two days ago. Mm -hmm. Um, a guy comes up to me in the gym. Mm -hmm. He says, "Yo, man, I'm so thankful y'all back on YouTube. Introduce yourself to me." He was like, "I love y'all show. It's, mm -hmm. it's helped me a lot." Great. And you know, I started asking about a situation where. Where he lived at, you know, what's his relationship status, that type of deal. And he explained that he's been married for a couple years. Mm -hmm. Now, one, just off the top of his mind, right, he starts to express this big issue he's been having. And he says, I really would like for y'all to talk about more about sex as it relates to my marriage. Because he says, one thing I didn't expect is when my wife got pregnant, that from when she found out she was pregnant, we would not have sex for an entire year. Mm. Mm. And he says, you know, he's like, yo, I'm 26 years old. He's mm. like, I would have never expected that that would actually be an issue yeah. I'm going to be dealing with at 26 years old. Mm. Yeah. So where is the grace? Like, how does that, like, basically, how does a man handle that? And should a man even expect some, some periods of, for a woman to 
pretty much be going through something so uh, affecting that she's not able to perform in the bedroom? Yeah, so I'll say this. I think this is why we advocate so much for celibacy before you get married, because there needs to be a certain level of discipline that you got to have, because you don't know what can become around the corner. You know, last time I was on with you guys, I told you all how I went through a nine-month fast for my wife, a voluntary fast. God was just like, your wife's dealing with some health issues. She's bad on depression, anxiety. She's just not in a good place. He was like, release her of that expectation. God was like, just make love to her heart. Mm -hmm. Make love to her mind. Still mm -hmm. take her on dates. Still mm -hmm. take her on trips. Mm -hmm. But just relieve her of, of what you need. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And God was like, I'm going to fill your heart. And I was able to get through those nine months. No porn, no side pieces, right? And I feel like those nine months was symbolic to God birthing something new in our relationship. Now she ain't got no question That's right. if, if I love her. Now That's she right. ain't got no question if I'm with her just for her beauty or her body. She was like, when my body was failing, you showed up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so mm. I would tell cats all the time, you got to have those open and honest conversations. But as men, sometimes that's what we do. Sometimes we feel like as men, this is what I need. Yes, you do have needs. And our needs are valid. But at the same time, like, if we are to be the head, if we are to be the leaders, let me tell you something, bro. If we on the boat right now and the ship is going down, out of everybody in here, the two ladies is the first one that's going to get off to get rescued. Right? Point blank. If, right. if, I'm, in, if right. I'm in the house Point with my blank. family Point and blank. something happens and only three people can get rescued, it's my two children, my son, my daughter, and my wife. Like, that's the sacrifice we make. As men, you want to be a man, you want to be a big dog, you want to be gangster, you want to be that dude, then you got to be that dude to sacrifice. That's what made Jesus so trill, bro. Right. He was like, I'm going to get up on this cross and I ain't even sin. I ain't even do nothing. I'm going to take the hits. I'm going to put them stripes on my back. So that anointing, that power, that strength, that clarity, it comes from a place where you say, you know what, let me back up. Let me make sure she's in her best place possible. But it takes a real man to do that. And the average cat today, and I ain't even mad at him, the average cat not really on that level. Mm -hmm. They like, but this is what I need. And listen to me, brother. I feel you, bro. I've been married for 13 years. I've been there, done that. I've gone through there. My wife has broken my heart for years. Like, we fought through a lot of stuff. But on the other side, you become stronger. Mm -hmm. So to that cat, I'd be like, yep, you went through that year. That was painful. But now you got a lifetime with your wife. Mm -hmm. And so I think it just it comes down to that open dialogue for us to really build and be able to have that connection and really meet them where they are. So a marriage can be sexless and still healthy. Absolutely. Man, I got one of my homeboys, bro. His wife is a, I don't know if it's like a like paraplegic. Like she's like paralyzed. Bro, he gotta bathe her. Bro, he gotta like he gotta wash her face. He gotta brush her teeth. He gotta do her hair. Her face is kind of twisted. And when he come to our conferences and our events, and he moves his wife around in the wheelchair, I'm like, bro, you such a mighty man. Mm. I told Crump when I was going through something a year ago, I was like, I might fly to Texas and spend some time with my man. You know what I'm saying? Cause cause the way he serves and loves his wife, she can't listen. She can't do nothing for my man. She can't put it on him. She can't do nothing. She, he literally has to do her hair and bathe her and dress her. And I, but he knew that going into it. I'm like, bro, that's different. And so, yeah, there can be a, a, a sexless marriage. And sex is almost like, that's the, can we talk about how that's just the cherry on top? Bro, that's not the ice cream. That's not the chocolate drizzle. Now, you, you, you should use some chocolate drizzle. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, the sex is like the bonus. You get to build. You get to, you be, you get to build the empire of life with someone. Like, that's different. So wow. <laughs> I guess what you're describing, what, is, what does a marriage look like? What does a marriage look like? Because I, I can tell us a difference with what you're describing between sex and intimacy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Big difference. <laughs> oh what, does, what does intimacy look like in a marriage? You vulnerability? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Not just transparency, but vulnerability. I'm giving you access to me in a way you would never have unless I volunteered it. See, like, honesty is if you ask me a question and I give you a truthful answer. That's honesty, hmm. right? Transparency is, uh, man, it looks like you do this and I confirm it for you, right? Vulnerability is you was never going to know unless I told you. Hmm. And intimacy is when I feel safe enough with my partner to tell her everything that I am thinking mm. and or feeling without her having to ask for it. Mm -hmm. That is vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability is when I confess to her that I'm tempted to watch porn 
and masturbate. Mm-hmm. That's vulnerability. Mm-hmm. She was never going to know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> vulnerability is when I saw another big ass mm-hmm. and then told her, I saw a big ass. <laughs> she was never going to know right. that right. and a lot of times what the expectation that we have in marriage is usually informed by movies that have script writers mm-hmm. Not really. and that's why it looks so pristine Mm. And we fell in love with that image because we paid for $14 for this ticket. And now we went home and said, how come you don't respond like this? Because they don't have a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There's no one feeding them the lines. Mm -hmm. How Mm -hmm. come you didn't respond the way I thought Mm -hmm. you would? Well, I didn't know. I'm sorry you triggered me missing my daddy. And so now I wound up yelling at you. And I ain't Mm -hmm. even yelling at you. I'm yelling at him, but he ain't here. So you about to catch these vapors. So intimacy is predicated upon how much information you feel safe enough to give your significant other. And the more information you give them without them having to ask, and the more they can accept and receive you, all of you, not the muscled you, not the bank account you, not the cologne you, not the groomed you. I'm in between shaves. I'm in between cuts. Juliet ain't like, oh, my God, he didn't cut Mm -hmm. his hair. Your beard ain't trend, man. No, she in love with all this. She in love with <laughs> with, with, with with 10 mm-hmm. day old, mm-hmm. you know, hair mm-hmm. growth, and mm-hmm. she's in love with, oh, fresh new cut straight out the barber's mm. chair. It don't matter. But to your point that you said earlier, my wife was with me when I didn't have no job and no car. My wife was with me when I didn't have no money. My wife was with me when the first nine months of our marriage, I didn't have a job. She was going to work. Come on, bro. And I was at home filling out applications. Come on. Five years later, I retired her from her job. She's never had to work a nine to five for anybody beside herself since. Mm -hmm. Because I figured some stuff out. But our intimacy is based on the fact that we share with each other where we are and who we are. And that's why after 24 years, we are still together. Where most marriages, between years 20 and 30, the, the increase in divorce rate goes up. You wouldn't think after 20, 30 years, you would think, oh, y- y'all coasting. But somewhere at year 20 or 30, what happens is people don't understand you change every decade. Mm-hmm. If tragedy hits mm-hmm. or some circumstances, illnesses, physical maladies, whatever, you could change every five to seven years. Mm-hmm. So after 20 years, people pop up and realize I'm not married to the same person. Mm-hmm. Of course you're not. You're not mm-hmm. even the same person. Right. So I've been married to Julia 24 years. I've been married to like six different women. Mm. So, so, Jeremy, let me ask you this. If what Tim is saying, intimacy is the formula, right? For, it is. You and know, let me give a practical example okay. of that. So, my wife and I, we, I remember one time we was having a marriage counseling session, mm-hmm. and uh, we was there with our, with our coaches, and we was going through it, and I, bro, I was angry, bro. Mm-hmm. I was crying. Like, I was, I even, I was cussing. Like, I was really, like, letting it out. Right after the session, she was just like, I feel something new in my heart for you. She was like, I feel so much closer to you because I was able to be open and be vulnerable and be like, man, this is who I am. I'm sitting here crying. I feel embarrassed by what I have to share with you. But there was that closeness, right? So when we talk about intimacy, it's like you really being into your mate, into mate, right? Like, so you are being closer to them. So whether that is, it's almost like being emotionally naked. The, around the average person, you're going to have clothes on or at least some drawers and a beater, right? But when you can be butt naked, fully expose your heart, to that other person, yeah. right? So it's like, so, so here's the problem in a lot of relationships. You'll see your spouse naked physically, but not emotionally. The sweet spot is when you can see them naked physically and you can see them naked emotionally. And you like, I love your body outside and I love your mind on the inside. Like, so that's that deeper intimacy. So I've just seen in my marriage, the best thing I can do for my marriage is to be open, to be vulnerable, to be transparent. Yes, sir. And because that's that deeper intimacy. My wife is like, man, give me something you're not giving the people on the podcast. Give me something you're not giving <laughs> people when they when you're speaking on stage. Give me something you're not giving Instagram. That's right. Like, give me something you ain't that's giving right. your homeboy. It's like, right. if we're going to share this one bed together, like, mm-hmm. I want to know some things about you that don't nobody else know. That makes me want to share my life with you. And so that's just a practical example 
of how intimacy has changed the game in my marriage. But back in the day, I used to think intimacy was us being more physical. Mm -hmm. But I'm realizing now it's more sharing the matters of the heart, no matter how ugly it is. Let me tell you something. I'm glad you just said that. Because this thing on intimacy is a cheat code, especially for the generation we live in now, where the, the chances of you finding a virgin. <laughs> Slim to none. Slim, I'm, I'm shooting for under five bodies. Even right? if she is a virgin, I wouldn't believe it. Right, 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 right. The, right I'm right. just saying, the, the chance, yeah. it's, and that's not, it's not shaming, mm -hmm. but the chances of you finding a virgin is, right? If you're not one, don't expect the person <laughs> you find to be one, right? Here's the thing. Do you know how many emotional virgins are out there? Mm. A lot of them. Mm. Based on what he just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've seen them, them physically naked. Mm -hmm. You might have a body count, but you've never told nobody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who the real seven-year-old you is. Mm -hmm. You never told nobody what happened to you when you was 11. Mm -hmm. You've never expressed your fears, your deepest, darkest secrets with somebody. So maybe there is something. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have given away your body but maybe you haven't given away your soul. Hmm. And that is something that is sacred and can be held in an exclusive union between a man and a woman. Let me go ahead and say that in 2023 as well. <laughs> right, okay? right, right. Um, that could literally help people understand like, yo, I have something to give my partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, should, now this is the thing, should she know all of that? Like. Because I do feel like there's this level of selective vulnerability, right? Like, is should she truly know every aspect of your weakness, of your past, of what you're not good at, or as a man, is just some shit that we just got to deal with on our own and keep away from her? Because I, th I feel like that is a part of shouldering a load, right? Like, there's a load that we have that we shouldn't necessarily offload on her that may not necessarily be her responsibility to deal with or to know, but what's y'all? What, what do you guys think about you know being mm. selectively vulnerable, and what should we be looking to talk to her about, and what should we be just dealing with and handling as men? And that's does sharing question. mean offloading? Is that the same thing? That's a good question. I think that's where you lean on discernment, right? Because there are some seasons when I could have shared some stuff with my wife, but she didn't have the bandwidth. You know what I'm saying? She was already dealing. So if I unload all I got going on on top of you it's gonna make you worse. I got one of my homeboys, he was on the prayer line, and he was just like, you know, he talked to his wife, and he told his wife, like, babe, you know, I'm really struggling with porn right now, I want you to be my, my accountability partner. Oh, no. She was like, I don't, she's like, I miss me with that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, I, but he was like, you my best friend. She's like, bruh, you got homeboys for that. You know, come to me like when you, and so, but I get it, he was like, I wanna share everything with you. But I think that's where you gotta use discernment. And so I'm not saying, you know, you, you got to just use discernment. But there are some times and some seasons when God is like, bro, your wife ain't even, she's not ready for that. Or she's in a weird place. Or don't share this. You, this is going to affect her in a negative way. So then I got to be mindful of, okay, when do I have this hard conversation with you? I tell cats all the time, it's like, bro, if you want to do marriage counseling with your wife and you want to get some help, like don't go to her when she pissed. She going to be like, I don't want to talk to no counselor. That's right. But when things are smooth, and oh, okay, we we argued on Wednesday, but Friday, you, you don't hate my guts. You ain't throwing nothing at me. Babe, you know what? And this is what you don't say. Let's get marriage counseling. What you say is, I want to be the best husband. I need some help. Would you mind sitting down with a counselor with me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to use discernment. Don't ask her that when she's hot or when she's pissed, because then she's going to be like, man, bump that. I don't want to hear it. Right. So we got to just use discernment on what to bring to our wives, when not to bring it to them. You know what I'm saying? Because we, I'm all with the way my brain is wired. And when I share this, how is it going to affect you? That's right. That's why I govern my tongue so much. I ain't never yelled at my wife. I ain't never cussed my wife out. I, it's not that I'm perfect. I just know if I do that, it's going to break her down. And God told me, don't you use that same mouth, that same tongue that you bless people on stage and you baptize and, and you minister and you motivate. Don't use that same mouth to break your wife down. God is like, don't do that. So I know now the power that I have. And I don't want to abuse that anointing. So now I have to say, okay, let me, let me fade back because I know if I say this, it's going to make you feel that way. And now I got to deal with God. Because God told me years ago, he was like, how you deal with my daughter is how I'm going to deal with you. Mm. So I'm real intentional wow. on how I move when it comes to my queen. So there are times I might want to share something. God's like, bro, you got homeboys for that. You got a mom and a pops for that. You got pop, mm -hmm. you got Tim, you got Crump for that. Mm -hmm. Don't put that on your wife right now. So I just think we got to use discernment because sometimes you do need to have that hard conversation. 
So it just depends. I love this dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can listen to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to you talk all right day, now, but sure. Absolutely, it is. yeah. It is. It's, So these about the discernment. How do you develop the you emotional develop the, the emotional intelligence Trial to be able to? Have, have there been that? times when you did something and you thought it was going to be smooth and your wife responded and you was like, hmm, I'm not going to do that no more. Oh, absolutely correct. <laughs> absolutely correct. Because when you when you step into when you step into a a, a marriage, you are stepping in, into foreign territory because <laughs> neither one of y'all have been there before. Right. I I liken it to. Um, uh, a person from, you know, Argentina marrying somebody from Russia. Mm. You've lived your entire life with two different languages, two different cultures, two different geographical landscapes and territories. Mm. And now you are coming together, not for both of you all to speak fluent Russian and Argentina. Now you're about to learn Chinese. Hmm. <laughs> Every union has to build the language yep. that works for them. Yep. My wife came from a divorced home, and as a result, a raised voice equals domestic violence. Hmm. Everybody in my family loud. Right. Yo, Rico. we all talk like this, like, yo, Mine too. I'm passionate. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, you're getting loud. I ain't loud. I'm just passionate. I'm just trying to prove my, I'm just trying to give you my point. I'm just yeah. communicating my Come point. On. I let on. you communicate your point. Come on. Silence. She don't open her mouth for the rest of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, I can either be, that's just me. Mm -hmm. Or because I desire that connection and that Come intimacy on. with her, Come on. I need to go learn a new language. I need to go get a tone that doesn't scare my wife off. And I come back with the FM DJ voice. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey baby, this is Tim Ross. It's that quiet storm. Yeah. <laughs> Always and forever dedicated to you. This one's going out to Juliet Ross. Mm -hmm. And my voice, no matter how angry, pissed off, or perturbed I may be, doesn't come above this register in this cadence and guess what mm. she feels connected to me mm -hmm. and we always get resolution on the conflict that was in front of Come us on, because i did not choose my way over our peace mm. So with that, mm -hmm. see, with that language, you're talking about people gonna have to, people from different places gonna have to learn the same language. The passport bro is gonna be in trouble. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. In trouble. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, for sure. Hold on, wait. I want to ask about that. What, what, what's your thoughts about that movement? About what? There's a move. So, I don't know. So what, the what passport bro. Oh, you don't know what's going on. Passport bro. Yeah, these are American oh, come men. Come on, Tim. Who have decided that they are no longer want to pursue American women. So what they're doing is they're getting passports. Some of these guys you know, never have passports. Getting passports, they, they are traveling to Thailand, Colombia, Brazil, uh, some of these other countries, and they're going out there looking for wives. Okay. So that's, that's the movement. In an the attempt to find uh, women who are more submissive. Yeah. They're lazy. Oh, bro. And lame. I, I, that's not a, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Yo, cute. No, no, cute. no. I, Cancel I'm, that trip. I'm hey, I'm, hey, I'm, make I'm, sure the audio is working I'm on this. I'm standing one. by what I said. Bruh. You're lazy. Bruh. Okay. So tell me, tell, we tell need me both, why, We Tim. need both takes on this. Tell one. me why, Tim. Um, and then I'm going to get a rebuke after you hit them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the, the work ethic is giving me a lack of work ethic. Like, like you. you you think this woman's attractive. You think she's beautiful. You take her out on a few dates. You realize she's rough around the edges. <laughs> and so now you want to go to Thailand to get a girl that knows 50 English words, but she's going to be so happy to be taken out of whatever circumstance she's in that she'll be your servant for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. It's giving me coming to America bark like a dog. Oh. Daily, it's, it's, daily back massages. It's, it's, right. it's giving me your royal penis is clean, sir. <laughs> you, you, you don't want a wife. You want a slave. That's it. I was thinking the same thing. That's crazy. 
you, you, you don't want somebody you can connect with and have to build with and have to argue with right. and have to uh, uh, take an L for. Like, oh, I guess you really do feel this way. You know right. what I mean? I guess, right. I guess we're not going to do that. I want a tattoo right here on my forearm. Juliet don't want me to have it. Because we do everything in unity, I can't get one down here. Now, y'all can say, oh, oh, you ain't no man. You letting her punk you. Well, I got... I got the tats where I want them, but the girl, she could look at my body more than anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to get it. Just be like, you ain't going to tell me what I, what I can't do. Mm -hmm. So it's giving me a lot of lazy. Hmm. Damn, Tim, you want a sleeve? A sleeve tat? <clears throat> I, I want something right here. I do want something right here. Tim but is you... the most damn gangster pass I know. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For sure. <laughs> I'm from L.A., dog. I don't know what to tell you. Like, yes, it is. I love it. I love so it. to the cats, that's like, I didn't even know there was a passport. I didn't uh, know either. Movement, but so the, uh, we in them trenches. Because we ain't lazy. We in them trenches. We ain't lazy. I mean, right. me, 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 the me and Ty getting stamps on our passport, but it's only for investigative purposes only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just want to see what, so, well, you know, we want to yeah, see what they talk about. A couple of bath houses yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll say this. You want to go all the way over there to find someone, like you said, really mm -hmm. come back and be your servant, your slave. It's not really somebody you want to build with. And then you're going you gonna to get here and realize she, there's a, it's a language barrier. It's a culture barrier. I don't really understand you. I just, but you, 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 you more thinking. I want you to please me. But if you was really powerful, if you was really worth, are you even worthy of being submitted to? Cats is like, I want someone that's gonna submit to me, bro. What they submitting to? Some little boy stuff? Some little immature stuff? Mm -hmm. They, you want her to submit to you? What does that even mean, bro? Are you about to lead her? Man, my wife don't trust me. Are you trustworthy? Mm -hmm. Bro, when I quit my job to go full-time into speaking and ministry, my wife was like, I'm quitting my job too. It wasn't because she just was just like God told me to. She was like, bro, when you left the streets and you stopped kicking in doors and you stopped moving work and you stopped running nightclubs and you went all in with God, you was faithful, you got a job, you were serving at the church, you was a local elder, you was traveling and preaching and ministering while you were still locked in with the family. If you gave that your all, I can only imagine what happens when you release your job. Mm -hmm. I believe in you so much, I'm quitting my job too. Like, that's my biggest flex, bro. It's not how much money I make, it's how much money I made with my wife, with my queen, who was willing to sacrifice everything. So to the cast, it's like, I want to go here, and I want to travel and find somebody to submit to me. Have you even submitted to the plan of God? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Have you submitted to, like, okay, I'm here to serve you. You want her to submit. Are you willing to serve? Bro, I serve my wife. Bro, my wife spoiled rotten. Got cavities all on her heart, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, you I went to Italy, it. you love it? All right, we gonna go back. You went with your girls? I'm, I'm jealous, dog on her. I want to see that smile on your face. Like, I spoiled my queen because she gave me my children. She believed in me when ain't nobody believed in me. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel, for the cast, is like, I want to find somebody to submit. What are they submitting to? And what type of man do you have to be for them to even be willing to submit to you? And so I, I feel the same. I feel like it's lazy. They, they just want someone that can be they serve, yeah. they slave, yeah. but not someone they can really love and love them back and build with. That's Passport right. bros, you got 24 hours to respond. <laughs> right, right, right. Because the shots have yeah. been fired. Yeah, they have. The and, shots and let me say this, have bro, been it's, fired. Man, bro, it's, man, Tim, bro, I live in Atlanta. Bro, there are beautiful, attractive women everywhere. They that are. speak English. It's true. Come from different countries, but they're American or whatever. That will submit. Are you handling your business? Here's the reality. I'm speaking directly to the Passport boys. No disrespect, but I'm just going to keep it one thou while with you. He called you boys. It, <laughs> it's, 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 it's bros. It's bros. 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 <laughs> Whatever. My bad. Whatever. Passport kids. <laughs> no, 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 no. Passport kids. <laughs> passport toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> they getting shorter every round. God. God. <laughs> to the, to the passport it. bros. My brothers, listen. You, if you really want to find somebody to submit, if you're really that nice, if you're really worthy some, of being somebody submitting to, like they, they in the States. You don't have to go to another country to find somebody else. You handle your business, you know what I'm saying, and you're going to find you someone that can speak, that your language, that can cook, that can serve you, that can love with you, that can build with you, that can help you go to the next level. You don't have to go somewhere else. And so I think we've identified the root of that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of women that's single in America that would love to be um, taken care of and would love to serve their husband. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to go across the world to find somebody else just so they come back and do whatever you want them to do and submit to you. That's lazy. That narrative of women, the modern woman ain't submitting, bro, that's not true. Are there some that's like, I'm independent? Yes, but bro, it's a lot of women. I know I know six of them in Atlanta that are single, mm -hmm. that want a hardworking man that mm -hmm. love God. They ain't even looking for a super high value man. They just mm -hmm. like, I just want somebody that's good to their mama, 
somebody with decent credit, somebody that's going to love me and treat me mm -hmm. the right way. And I will submit to that man and make him feel like a king. There are people out here like that, but you got to be willing to do the work. And I think it goes back to your root issue. They lazy. They lazy. Mm. Yeah, they out here. I got a, I got a, I got, I got a, a couple of rotations. I got a, <laughs> <laughs> I got a god sister who has a degree, doctorate degree. She is brilliant. She is bright. She is beautiful. And she will become Susie Homemaker in a minute oh, mm. for the right man. That's what I was about to say. For the right man. And let's not act like these women couldn't pull out their own passports. Because cause, cause I, don't, I, I don't like when men give this energy that all women are this. In the same way, I don't like when women yeah, give the energy right. that all men are this. Let's stop capping. Hmm. The women you met is like that. Hmm. Some the of these women you attract. Yeah, yeah. And, and some of these women you attract. And here's the other thing. How in the world are you getting a passport to go to Thailand? You ain't been out of freaking Atlanta. <laughs> they literally are. You have never from been out of Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You've never even been to freaking California. Right. You might find a bad one in Mississippi. You ain't been nowhere. You ready to go to another country? <laughs> you ain't explored the you might find somebody in Boise, Idaho. You've been right. nowhere, dog. Right. Stop playing. <laughs> You going all the way to Thailand and you ain't been to Tennessee. Stop. Stop playing. All right, so uh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let my passport bros get a rest here. Right, right. The ass is red well, right now. I, 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 <laughs> let, let me let me ask this real quick, because coming from my, coming from my brothers, let's let's go back to my brothers in these sexless marriages, because you talked about some guys who just gotta be there, and there's some guys that's involuntarily there. They don't they don't necessarily want that, but they just Wait, in this want place. What? A, a, a marriage that is they lacking. Want, they no, want a, a nobody, healthy. A nobody wants a sexless marriage. No, so so nobody so, so, here, so here's what I want to ask oh, okay, okay. for the brother in that <laughs> oh, spot. Sorry, for the brother in that spot, how does he bring his? How does he bring that marriage back to life? How does he respark that marriage and have it going back on fire? Let me ask you a question, Tim. In 24 years of marriage, have you and your wife had marriage counseling, marriage therapy, marriage coaches? Absolutely. For for almost. The majority All of, of it. Come on, give me some, dog. Absolutely. Look, I'm, I'm 13 years in. We we rotated over these 13 years four different sets of marriage counselors, right? Just because you know you move to different cities, new perspectives, right. different seasons. Yes. Bro, it. Bro, marriage is hard. Yes, it is. Man, ain't nobody got time to be trying to figure things out mm -mm. by you know yourself. Bro, I want the cheat code. The two of you. Yeah, stop playing. And mm -mm. now there's this new wave in the world with courses and coaches. You better find you a coach. Absolutely. You better not be out here getting you a personal trainer, and then you got a financial coach and everything else for the and a hairdresser. Oh, come and on. And Mayling does your hair, does your fingernails oh, and your toes. You feel me? And you will only go see her. And Douglas does your cut. Come on, bro. But and you, you got a go. financial planner, but you ain't got nobody for your stop. It don't make no sense. Mm. So I say the first thing you do is you go get some help mm -hmm. and you find the right type of coach mm -hmm. that can sit down with you and really figure out what are her needs, what turns her on, what turns her off, what are your needs. Y'all begin to discover one another and hit that reset button. So I've worked with a lot of people. Shoot, that was me and my wife's journey. Like, I come from a big family, a family of six. She come from a family of one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was out here a bit. She wasn't on that. I'm, I'm a high eye, like, lots of energy. Like, want to connect with people. She's an introvert, like, kind of low key. So when it came to, like, sexually and intimacy, like, we was in two different planes. But I had to get to know her. And the more intimate I got with her heart and her mind, I knew now, okay, this is what your body likes. And so now we've grown over the years, and now we're in a different season that we weren't in a year and three years and five years ago. So I would tell any cat that's in a sexless marriage, their wife can't stand them, their wife is just like don't want to give them none, or whatever it is, you need to get some help. Because obviously you don't, I, see, I, I would be doing them a disservice if I said, here's some advice, this is what you go do. You obviously ain't got it like that. That's right. Go get some help. That's Figure right. Figure out what the root issue is. Yeah, you already tried it by yourself. Issue. Yeah, you try, it's not working. It's not working. Figure out what the root issue is. Find somebody, and we can recommend some folks. You can put it in the little description. I got some folks. I don't mind sharing my Absolutely. resources. Absolutely. But I, but I do believe that that will be a game changer it will. for them to get the necessary help to really understand this. Because sometimes you in a sexless marriage, and, and, and certain people view sex a certain way of pornography, Previous relationships, when you was first introduced to sex, some guys don't even know what turns their wife on. I remember having some weird conversation with my wife, like, man, boo, this is so weird. The average chick, she was like, don't you ever mention to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I was and I was like, I ain't say no name. Ain't like I said Sabrina. Right, right, right. She's like, bro, miss me. Like when I put my finger there. She was like, this is what I like. This is who I am. That's good. And so I began to go on a journey. I was, I had to literally reprogram my brain. That's good. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm like, you know what? I don't even, I don't even have no reference. What do you need? What do you like? Yep. What fits your fancy? Yep. I'm going to cater this loving to you. Yep. And I'm going to serve it every opportunity I get. Yes, wow. sir. I, okay, so, Tim, I need you to put your, your late night FM voice on for this. Oh, come cool. on, Tim. Give it so to me. So, I, I really want to talk some sex because uh, I was telling Tashawn about this, and Tashawn knows I'm crazy. So, when I see something online or something comes across me, I, I really want to dive into it. So, this was uh, a few weeks ago. I was just scrolling on Instagram, and I seen it was a... Uh, it was a lady. I, I can't remember her name, but she has like a million followers and she teaches. Um, she, well, what she does is she takes these graphic novels and she literally just reads them. And she has a bunch of women following. And she just basically talks about how women have a skill set. That's, that's why a bunch of women write these sex novels. Mm -hmm. So she basically teaches guys or just people in general. This is how women prefer to talk dirty, talk sex. Mm -hmm. So I done took this thing. I done looked at a couple posts and I'm like, interesting. Start scrolling online and I'm like, yo, I'm finna start trying this shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tyshawn, no, Tyshawn, Tyshawn, Field no. Field research. Last <laughs> week, I'm like, yo, Tyshawn, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, and you know, I, Bruh, you know, boy, I gotta have different. The most hilarious last week I gotta week have different. Life. I gotta have different test subjects. You know what I mean? I'm a single man in Atlanta, so I'm yeah. like, yo, Tyshawn, look at this text thread. I'm like, look what she said here. I'm like, you see what I said? You see what I said? <laughs> and what I found that, you know, me learning this new skill of communicating, I found that, like, for me, my dirty talk was. You gonna get this big fat dick, shoved, you know, <laughs> shoved, you know, in all holes. You know what I mean? Right, right. But basically, what she, the lady was saying was the like, ear? you gotta be more like less graphic hmm. and more subtle. Yes, sir. So I started saying things like, a "Young lady, send me a picture." I'm like, "Man, your smile is driving me crazy. I can't stop thinking about what I'm gonna do to you when I see you." Instead of saying, "Shove this big fat," you know, dick inside. <laughs> And I started, which is relative. I started and I started to see the response. Right, right, right. Which is relative. I started nice. to get. I started to get these uh, the responses I was getting. Big to who? And let me tell you something. Hey, look, Tim. Tim. You don't, hey, you don't want to go after dark up in here, all right? Because I'm gonna have to listen, ladies. That's why they go to Thailand. On all scales. On all scales. It's, it's big, big in Thailand. It's, it's small in the Congo. <laughs> Yo, he's crazy. Hey. I'm sorry, bro. It was so good. It was out of you, dog. It was, it was, it was already up. No, so, there, so, listen, so, so the responses I was getting was right. like, I mean, I would end up getting up with these women, and they're like, I could even see them visibly be like trembling almost, just nervous. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. Just very turned on from brimming with excitement. Brimming with excitement. Mm. You see how I use that word? Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, this shit is I'm telling now. Not I'm trying, horny. Now I call myself trying Not to horny. teach Ty yep. how to talk to women. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, Ty, no, you need to say this. <laughs> Involuntary education. Involuntary, right, 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 right. <laughs> but but I found to have this success. Yeah. So I want to ask you guys, I mean, is there, you know, ever times where you go out, you know, not the Therapy, you know, obviously guys are successful, so that's, you know, foreplay, some level of foreplay, right? Just being successful, mm -hmm. strong man you are. But do you ever look to add this different layer of sexual game, yeah, you know, to your to your repertoire? Yeah, your so, so my text thread with my wife, when I want to be intimate with her, I start with it in her head. Mm -hmm. It ends with us in our bed. Mm. But I start in the head. And I start in the morning. After I'm gone, with words. I'm putting text messages. I'm putting little emojis. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reminding her of the connection I would like to have with her. Mm. And I'm doing it in, I, I, used to, I, I used to do spoken word. I was a battle rapper. I, so words are my love language anyway. Mm. The more words I know, it's like crayons. I get to paint more colorful pictures with every other word I learn, every new word I learn. So there is, there is an intentionality. And again, this is different in marriage than when you're watching porn. When you're watching porn, first of all, this girl is getting paid four to $12,000 for every scene that she does. The average male porn actor is getting 
between maybe five hundred to a thousand dollars. If wow. you're getting a thousand dollars as a male porn actor, you're you're big time, right? Why why am I giving you that comparison? Because these women are paid and these men are paid to have sex that is not based in reality. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever come home while your wife is doing dishes and just kissed her on the neck and she was like, oh no, get it, baby. Right, right. Did she just bend over while right. she was still doing dishes right. to get knocked down? <laughs> no. Right? So, so um, you got to remember that those are actors mm -hmm. and actresses. Mm -hmm. Who you are dealing with is a real woman. Even though you are running through a field test to see if this works, you find out that this does work. But these are real women with real emotions. And you are opening them up. Mm. So even if it's a test, you have now opened this woman up to what? Mm. Damn. Is there a follow-up? Has the test just been concluded? I just wanted to see if I can get you wet, and now I've moved on? Or is it, I know I'm opening you up, and I want to be careful with your openness because I want to steward your body, your mind, and your soul correctly. You're going to belong to God way before you belong to me. And I want to ensure that I do this the right way. Now, have you noticed my tone mm -hmm. the whole time mm -hmm. that I've been talking to you? Mm -hmm. It's the FM DJ voice. Yep. And you can do it in text and you can do it in a phone calls and the, this, even though I've been married 24 years, my memory ain't short. Some, some people get selective amnesia. I do not have that. I knew this as a teenager. Mm. I was never the best looking guy. I was never going, I stopped growing at 5'9", okay? I was a buck 20 when I, when I graduated high school. My senior year in high school, I was 120 pounds. I had no problem getting a girl because I could talk where these other dudes were just really rude and really crude. I always had a sense of humor and I could always empathize with where a woman was, and that's what would bring the connection. Mm. So words matter. In the same way physical pulchritude matters to a man, verbal pulchritude matters to a woman. So what, you, what you're talking about, Tim, that's brilliant, is making love all day. Yes, sir. <coughs> right, so I might have the orgasm at eight or nine o'clock that night, but I start making love at eight o'clock that morning. Mm. When I wake my wife up in the morning and I give her a kiss and I have her coffee ready, and I'm like, you good, babe? You about to get Jackson ready? <coughs> I'm gonna dro drop him off at school. Like that hits different. Then when I'm texting her throughout the day, how's your day going? Then when she come home and I got a fresh bouquet of flowers I put together from the florist, for you know no, what I'm and it's just a random Tuesday. Oh, wow. Just a random Tuesday. Right, right. But this ain't Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm. I'm just like the other one started to get exactly. wilted I did last week. So let me do another one. And I'm not, my sister, I'm not doing that in hopes to get some poo poo. That's right. I just need her to know you are loved. That's absolutely correct. You are cherished. That's you are valued. Correct. By the absolutely time that correct. nighttime comes, uh -huh. now she's like, uh -huh. we got a big old modern tub in our bathroom. She's like, I'm going to take a bath. You want to join me? Yes. I'm like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I don't mind. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I done already put that work in. So mm -hmm. I would just tell cats, they think just whatever, it's like, nah, you got to start earlier. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The morning, the afternoon, the evening, like, let me rub your feet. And I'm not expecting nothing in return. You get to a point where they begin to desire it. So the text I'm getting from my wife now, the calls I'm getting from my wife now, the interest I'm getting from my wife now is different. Because I was making love to this before I was making love down there. Promiscuous sex is a microwave. Hmm. Exclusive sex is an oven. Hmm. And we all know... Food tastes better out of the yeah. oven Damn sure do. Damn sure do. than the microwave. This woman that brought this food, she didn't make that in the microwave. You could have opened that freezer and got some Pop-Tarts out and put it in the, uh, you know, got some Tostinos or something like that. She no. never came back again. I she, tell you that she prepared. She <laughs> prepared. That took. Pre a chef yeah, takes come on, preparation. Come on, come on, Shout out to Bricks. This uh, episode is sponsored by Bricks, by the way. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The chef, that took preparation. To McDonald's takes a minute. It's called fast food for a reason. It's not going to leave your body in the most healthiest place. This dude, Steve, over here, he ain't full of McDonald's. Right. 
You can't eat Chicken McNuggets and get that body. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a Chicken McNugget body. It's not. I'm sorry. He eats clean food. Mm -hmm. And his muscles testify to that. I ain't even got to know that he has a clean diet because mm -hmm. a clean diet will equal that body mm -hmm. and that mind. Mm -hmm. So what are you preparing in your marriage? It has to be something fresh. It has to be some organic. It has to be something that's rooted in truth. It has to be, it has to be authentic. It has to be vulnerable. But fast food dating? Mm. Big dick energy. <laughs> you can't handle this pussy. <laughs> Nigga, you about to be sleep. I'm going to knock you out. And sex is a competition. Mm. Y'all can't even enjoy each other because I'm going to knock you out first. I'm going to make you nut in under 60 seconds. I know. I told you this be dangerous. You don't want me to throw this on you. Well, Y'all are gladiators. Y'all not lovers. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> It's violence. You know they what I'm chose saying? Violence. Yeah. They chose violence instead of intimacy. Mm -hmm. They they chose to be barbaric instead of choosing bonding. Mm -hmm. They 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 chose crass instead of connection. Come on. You, you got another one. <laughs> <laughs> they they chose fornication instead of fellowship. Mm. There you go. Yeah. There it goes. We 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 got to strip away all this toxicity mm. that we've seen in relationship in relational dynamics and we got to stop having the wrong role models. Mm -hmm. Bobby and Whitney wasn't your role model. Right. Don't be disappointed. Will right. and Jada ain't your role model. Don't be disappointed. You need to go look for a couple that's been together celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary. Go talk to them. Mm -hmm. My mentor just actually told me this. I was having this conversation with him and he said, unfortunately, what you said, you know, we learn sex from porn. Yeah. And the premise of, of porn, much of it, really, when you consider it, it's like it's about ravishing. Yeah. Really centered around rape. Yeah. And what he also talked about, he said in the premise of rape is what you do is you weaponize your yeah. penis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why we, you know, we beat the pussy up. Mm -hmm. All of our That's, adjectives. We smash. Yeah. Smash. We yeah. smashing. Yeah. We, we cutting, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, That's, we yeah. stabbing, mm -hmm. we knocking down. Shooting up the club. We, we shooting <laughs> up the club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, think about it. Break, all, breaking her off. Yeah, yeah. breaking her off. Yeah. All of the verbiage. Pounding. Uh, pounding. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That was the last one. That was the last one. I slaughtered it? You slaughtered it? I broke her back. You broke her back. <laughs> you don't. Pussy. You don't want. You don't want to get in there again. You right. broke her back. Man. You know what I mean. Man. So so so. But bonding and connection. That sound. It 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 it, it is it is difficult for a hard man to want to be soft. Pa. <laughs> <laughs> But, but think about it. <laughs> that statement can't even be received with purity right, 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 because right. of what we've done to sex in culture. Right. We've, we've made innuendos out of almost anything. Everything. Though maybe may, one would say that God initially wired us to, to most of the time with our wives to be soft. But then there are some times we should be hard. That's absolutely correct. And so when I'm not just talking about in this in the physical. Yeah, erections. Yeah. What if like my wife typically she don't need a hard Jeremy. No. She don't need a hardcore me. When yeah. she energy she she on stage, she yeah. like, bro, miss me with that. Absolutely. She correct. needs someone soft and gentle. Yeah. And then when you want something hard, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, absolutely. Correct. So there, there needs to be, I'm gonna give you that. That's exactly right. You know what I'm saying? That's or if exactly someone, right. If someone comes around my crib yep. and she needs me to be more assertive, yep. I'm gonna pound you. Right, exactly. I ain't gonna pound, I'll That's pound it. that if you want. Right, right, I'm gonna right, right, pound right. you though. That's so exactly there's a right. difference there. Absolutely. So yeah. Yeah. Let, 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 yeah, let, let me hit y'all with this one here because we're gonna talk to the freaks real quick. Because is we haven't talking to we, me? We, we haven't been. No, 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 no. <laughs> have we not? Yeah. Right? Have we not been talking? We're we talking to who, each other. Who have you been talking to? The freak community. So let's, <laughs> let, 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 let's, go, let's go there real quick because I know there are people in marriages that are either considering, have considered, or actively putting themselves in a position where they're talking about introducing someone else into the bedroom. Right. This ethical non-monogamy. Right. Right. So I want to know. What? 
Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. That's, yeah. what it's, that's just what it's referred to as. I'm not so, so stating this ethical. So, so, so let, oh, let, let's talk to, about it. Let's talk. Uh, about, is there any right way to bring somebody else? No. Don't even finish the sentence. I was, no. Tim, I, no, I, I disagree, no. Tim. Damn, I've been rocking Ooh. with you this whole time. <laughs> I've been rocking with you this whole time. But I really believe in order for us to have a successful marriage, you need to have a threesome. Oh, oh yeah. I, I already husband, know where you're going. I already know where you're going. The go wife and the Holy Spirit. There you go. When, there you when, go. when you mix, there when you, you, go. you feel me? Yeah, when, no, you, when, no, you, yeah, when you mix, when you mix, Absolutely. listen to me. When you mix God, <laughs> when you mix God in there, like, bro. Hey, like, bro. Hey, he thought he had one. Bruh. He thought he had one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yo, Jeremy, yeah. Jeremy. Hey, look, where you going now? Right, 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 right. I knew that was my boy. Go. <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm like, yo, I want to marry like his. Listen, I want to marry like his. I need some water now. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something. Yeah, man, what, the what you, what you mix in, because here's the thing, right? So me and my wife, man. like, okay, we doing our thing. You know, we having sex, and it's cool. But when I really start praying, like, man, God, I really want to know her heart. When I, when my wife started praying, like, I really want to know her. Bro, I check the cameras. You know, I got, you know, I been, y'all been to the crib. Bro. Yeah, we yeah. got cameras all over the crib. Bro, I check the cameras one morning. It's like 5, 45, 6 o'clock. I see her having her devotion. She was on her knees for like 20 minutes praying. I was like, ooh, tonight finna be fire. <laughs> I'm like, I'm seeing something different in my girl. You know what I'm saying? So I believe that when you infuse God in the relationship, he is going to lead you. He, he guided you to that spouse, and he's going to show you. He cr- Come on, y'all, stop playing. I believe, I believe in God, right? God created marriage. God created sex. He wants it to be good. That orgasm, when you bust that nut, when she comes, she squirts, people just thinking like, oh my God, that's the best feeling in the world. It God is. made that. It is. The enemy has tried to pervert it. That's right. But God made that. Yeah, no. When you put God in the mix, your Yo. wife, your spouse, Yo. the orgasms are going to go through the roof because of who is in the room. Yo. Wow. <laughs> Girl, rub that so, Bible before you get in my bed. So, <laughs> so, 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 so we in agreement. Yeah, I knew as wow. soon as he started on his threesome, yes. where it was going. Okay. I did you not have work for me. No, I wasn't. Okay. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Okay. Okay. He was like, no, no, no. I disagree. I yeah, said, yeah. oh yeah, I know. Oh, he's yeah, about yeah, to go. Yeah. It's dope. Okay, so, so now let me just give Bible for this. Come on, because we are believers in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Don't get it twisted. Don't think anything coming out of my mouth don't mean that I don't love Jesus. Right, facts. Right? I just know how to I just know how to talk like a like a Babylonian. I know how to talk like a Corinthian. Okay? I can speak the language of the culture, mm-hmm. okay? But let's not get it twisted. Right. We are followers of Jesus. Right. Right? I had a dude when I was a young adult pastor come in my office with his wife to try to convince me that polygamy Having more than one wife was okay. And that he had biblical grounds. For oh, come on, biblical grounds. Based on Old Testament hmm. Abraham did it. Stories. Not the new. <laughs> Not the new. Right. Old Testament, which I acknowledge the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. No worries. So he wants to go to the story of Jacob. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Jacob had Leah, Rachel, Rachel mm-hmm. Zilpah, and Bilhah. So how come I can't have more than one. Patricia, I said, Sabrina, <laughs> right, Tasha, Tanya, Serena. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> that was Barbara, Tina. Right. <laughs> Shout out to DMX. Okay, right. so, so, so I, so I let him. I, I be, I be letting niggas talk. Yeah. I don't interrupt nobody because I'm curious. I'm not defensive. I ain't got to defend nothing. Mm-hmm. I just be letting niggas talk. So I let him talk, and I let him get all of that. He had. He went to all his scriptures. Mm. Oh, duh, 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 duh. And I said, okay, cool, cool, cool. So, do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Mm. That, yes. All right. And, and you believe God raised him from the dead? Yes. Okay. All right. And, and you believe the scriptures? Yes. I mean, like, so I heard yours, right? So that, that says that. And there's a lot that, I could be, that could be said about the Old Testament and, and what God had to put up with for his purpose and plan to ultimately get to Jesus. He had to deal with humans. And, and in the same way, if the, if the Old Testament started with a dude named Deontay and Compton, you're going to have to deal with a lot to get to Jesus from Deontay and Compton, right? <laughs> That's just facts, okay? So I said, do you believe that um, the church is Jesus' bride? Yes. Do you, be, do you believe Ephesians 5, that husbands should love their wives as Christ loves the church and gave himself mm-hmm. for it? He said, yes. I said, then who is Jesus' side chick? Mm. 
since you get to have more than one woman, because marriage is supposed to be a mm -hmm. type and shadow of the way Christ loves the church. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you telling me that the image of you and multiple wives mm -hmm. could bear the image of Jesus, who is Jesus's other wife? Hmm. Crickets. Is it Islam? Is it the Baha'i faith? Hmm. Is it Buddhism? Mm -hmm. Is it Scientology? Mm -hmm. Is it Harry Krishna's? Mm -hmm. Who is his other woman or women? There is none. Mm -hmm. Silence from the peanut gallery. Mm -hmm. And the wife is sitting there with slow tears coming out of her eyes. Because what this fool, and I use that term exclusively for people, mm -hmm. <laughs> that exhibit that type of behavior, what this fool completely missed is he wanted someone other than his wife so bad that he would try to change scripture mm. to get it done. And all I'm saying is that if that's the life you want to live, don't bring my God into it. Thanks. But I can tell you, if you might have a, you might not believe in Jesus or believe in the Bible. I'll just tell you from my book, it ain't going well for any man from Genesis to Revelation to have more than one spouse. Hell, it barely goes good for men. Hmm. <laughs> With the spouse they got. <laughs> right. Can you, can, can you even keep that spouse? Happy? I don't know how you want to introduce another whole woman into this category when it's going to take you a lifetime to figure out right. the one you the with one. now. And you can't even make her happy. You can't even make her but happy. You, you going to bring, bring another somebody one? Else because they, it's, but it's rooted in selfishness. That's exactly because right. Because now they like, okay, well, you not meet my needs. Well, I'm going to find somebody else. And so I get it. They like, I'm going to bring somebody else in that can meet my needs and, you know, meet me where I'm at. But when you get to a point where you say, you know what, let me just see if I can master you. Be faithful over the few things, and God will make you rule over many. But that rule over many don't mean I'm going to have multiple wives. Like, you're going to be able to have many more experiences with this one wife right here. And so that's what, that's what I would say, man, to cast this like I want to have another wife. You don't want to have another wife because you just have so much love to give. I just have so much love in my yeah. heart. Nah, bro, you want something else to smash, pound, cut. You know what I'm saying? That's right. going to put it on you when this one don't feel like it. Right. As opposed to you really chasing their heart and doing the hard work. That's what makes you a real man. If you be faithful with one woman. Brother, you know how easy it would be? I live in the land. I do very well. You know how easy it would be for me to have a bunch of side chicks? Easy. Do you know how hard it is, though, to have one woman? Hard. And turn that one woman on and please her every single time? Like, that's, that's a, that takes a different type of man. It'd be easy for me to have four or five, six different ones I can run to. But when I Too continue to easy. please... easy. Over and over and over the same person year after year. That's a different energy. Now, see, that's the. I think that's the. I think that's what guys are struggling, <clears throat> because, I mean, even as I communicate to guys, you know, like they, it's, it's the state, it's the like the saying that rolls around in the community, the savage community, ain't no pussy like new pussy. <laughs> yeah, right. That, TK that, that's what that's what they say, right? Okay. right. And see, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I understand. Oh, for sure. Because Bro, I wrote the book. I'm gonna be honest. Trust me. I see the play in you. Yeah, I see. So it. I ain't, I, I, we, we is not on that. Like, oh, they should not. No, I get it. But see, so, so this is this is what the brothers. <laughs> this this is what the brothers are struggling with. The brothers understand that every time they get with this new woman, there's this unique level of excitement, mm -hmm. anticipation, and how do you somehow figure out how to have that thirty. 40 years later with the same woman. How am I just as excited as when I looked at the Instagram for the first time and saw that ass You're right. and was like, I can't wait mm. okay, to but, get to this. Uh, uh, so like that, that's, that's what the real struggle is. I understand, but, but let's slow down. Okay, I'll go back to FMDJ voice and I'm going to try to appeal. What did you call the community? The savage community? The savage community. Yeah. Dear savage. Which one is my camera? This one? It's this one. That one. This one. Dear savage community. Ain't no pussy like new pussy. <laughs> but the moment you have new pussy, it's no longer new. Mm. So new pussy is going to always turn into old pussy. Which means you're going to be on the hunt for new pussy mm. for the rest of your life. Mm. You are lazy and you're not thinking clearly. 
choose the pussy <laughs> attached to the person that you can live exclusively with for the rest of your life because your logic is flawed. All new pussy turns into old pussy. So when does it end? When your money g dries up? Mm. When your libido dries up? Because mm. here's what's going to happen. You going to bone your way into irrelevancy. Because there will be a day you grow up and you wake up and new pussy don't want you no more. Mm. When you could have had, at this point, some old pussy. And that old pussy is gold pussy. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I just had to hit it with that one time. You already know. <laughs> Let me Carry tell you on. something. I eat my leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh. I eat my leftovers. And they are delicious. Mm. And nutritious. Oh, for sure. <sighs> when you drop when you drop that course on <laughs> <laughs> on how to make the I just, old gold. I just I, I just be thinking yeah. I just be trying to think. Yeah. Ain't no like again, I'm a wordsmith and, and I'm a literalist. Mm -hmm. So when you say ain't no pussy like new pussy, okay, but when does it get old? Right. It, a new pair of shoes is new to the first time you put them on. Then they ain't new. You can't take them back to you can't put them back in a box and put them back and take them back to stock X. You wore them. Mm -hmm. So after that first time or second time or third time, it ain't new no more. Mm -hmm. So now you're training your body to only arise for strangers, mm. which means you never want to be settled. Mm. You never want to be, oh, now let me, thank you, Holy Spirit. You don't even want to be known. Mm. And the savage community is hiding. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me slow down some more. You are running from yourself. And you're disguising it as new pussy is the best pussy. When the truth is, you don't want to stick around long enough to be known because you're afraid you're going to be rejected. Hmm. And so before it can settle in and they realize I'm not all that, mm -hmm. that I don't have it all together, that there's something behind the curtain mm. of my success. Oh, time for some new pussy. Mm. When the mm. truth of the matter is you don't want to be known. Mm. Wow. I, I'm not going to lie. This is a master class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo. So okay. I felt that thing. No, that was the Holy Spirit. Guys, amazing. guys, okay. So let's say you know you 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 want to maintain the you know the sexual polarity in the relationship. You know you want to have sexual success or whatnot. And you so you got sexual fantasies, you got uh, sexual fetishes, and you got sex toys. Based on you guys' experience or based on you guys' philosophy, do you know are those allowed in the bedroom? And if so, whether it's the fantasies, the fetishes, or the toys, what's the um, like how much of it is allowed in the bedroom? Is there certain things that you will do and other things that you just like, hey, even though I may, I may enjoy that, I don't even want to go there with my, with my significant other? Yeah, and I think it depends on your spouse, right? And I think you guys have to have an open, honest conversation and just ask, hey, do you like this? Do you like that? If I tickled you with this, would you mind wearing this? You want to act like we doctor and nurse? Like, if you know what I'm saying? There are so many different ways that you can spice it up over the years, right? <laughs> um, and still not get like too crazy, you know what I'm saying? But I think it really depends on their level of comfort and what they're willing to do. But that's when we have to say, hey, babe, hey, honey, all right, what is it that you're into? Do you want to try this? What do you think about that? And not putting it on them like, well, this is what I want. It's just like, no, I want you to feel good. You know what I'm saying? There was a season, and my wife has changed. There was a season when my wife was like, I don't like certain things. She, she's like, she told me the other day, she was like, I'm changed now. I, I like this now. I was like, hmm. <laughs> Praise God. When did that happen? <laughs> like, Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands. You know what I'm saying? I was like, thank you for informing me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Wow. But I was kind of in that, she's not, really, she not really on this, she don't like that. But I'm like, oh, you changed. And so people are naturally changing. 
when he said he's been married for 24 years, but he's been married to six different women, six different versions of Juliet, that was powerful. Mm -hmm. It's like every four years she's evolving mm -hmm. into this, and you're changing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely you're correct. Oh, absolutely. What turned you on years ago was probably different now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, 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 I would say I, I'm thinking about this from where, from where I am now and, and then em empathetically putting myself where the narrative is that you all are dealing with right now. Because 24 years into, to, into my marriage with Juliet, we've done it all. Like, like we've done all the role play and all, mm -hmm. we found out what we want to do and what we, so, so at, at, for a young marriage, I think you should try it all, right? Scripture says the marriage bed is undefiled and mm -hmm. through open, honest and trans, open, honest and transparent communication, you should be going, do you want to try something? Yeah. Try it once before you say you don't like it, just try it. And then mm -hmm. you can cross it off the list. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, I ain't I like it. Leave my booty alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? That takes too much. <laughs> it, it takes too much cleaning up. You right. know what I mean? I don't, right. I don't. You know, my tongue went too far in there, and <laughs> that, <laughs> you know what I mean. Your, your enema didn't work, and so you, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm just trying to get this thing off my off my mouth. <laughs> I didn't use a whole bottle of scope, and I'm still feeling something. Okay, okay. So you try everything, right? Let me tell you what happens after you figure it figured out. And you 13 years in, so so you may or may not be there. We, Juliet and I are in a Jerry Rice phase. That's what I call the Jerry Rice phase. Jerry Rice played uh, uh, football for like 20 years. He's mm -hmm. the, I, I think he's the best wide receiver that's ever he is. put he on is. the helmet, okay? Randy Moss would be a close second, but mm -hmm. Jerry, Jerry alone, right? Mm -hmm. So J Jerry, Jerry made multiplied millions of dollars over 20 years, running about four or five routes. Mm -hmm. A three-yard slat, mm -hmm. <laughs> a five-yard slant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A seven yard slant, mm -hmm. a wheel route, mm -hmm. right? Four or five plays kept him on the field for 20 years. Mastered them. Jerry, you didn't get tired of running in plays? No. Why? They worked. Facts. Why didn't you get tired of running in plays, Jerry? Because I got a touchdown. <laughs> Why did you get tired of running in plays, Jerry? Because I won a Super Bowl right. multiple times. And people, th th like, when you're young, you think, I don't want the sex to become routine because I don't want it to get boring. Nah, the routine becomes this safe play that you know every time I do this, mm -hmm. I score a touchdown. Mm -hmm. You're taking the guesswork out of it. Mm -hmm. New pussy, you got to figure out what new pussy like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Old pussy, if we're going to call it old. Gold, gold pussy. Gold <laughs> pussy. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about gold. Gold pussy, oh, you, you already know. I can run three to five routes. Yeah. I can run three to five plays. <clears throat> it's going to be a touchdown. Explosive. No, ga no guesswork here. I can run my three to five plays, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a touchdown. She can run her three to five plays on me. It's going to be a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing new to figure out. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful, safe thing. Right. LeBron James knows he can score 30 points a game if he just puts his head down and runs toward the basket. Mm -hmm. They either going to foul him or he's going to get an and one. Mm -hmm. They can't stop it. Mm -hmm. So run the play. Figure out what you like. Go put on. Go do your role plays and figure out what tickles and if you want something else. And and then afterwards, get your three to five plays. Take the guesswork out of it. Run your route. Yeah. So so <coughs> I, I, I want to ask this here too because mm. for creativity purposes only, <laughs> might I preface? Is it at all acceptable for couples to sit down and watch pornography together? Is that okay? I would strongly advise you not to. Your information, it matters where your information comes from. You could get money advice from a dope dealer. Or you can get money advice <clears throat> from a financial planner. Thanks. You can put your money under the bed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or you can put it in investment vehicles. You can get informed about your sex life from porn, or you can get informed by a sex therapist. Mm -hmm. mm. They both give you the option to be in, get in your information from somebody outside of yourself. But what you're going to take back with you right. is what's going to be important. 
and the sex therapist would actually be way more healthy because you don't know what you're going to get in porn. You don't think you don't know what buddy took to be able to go for two hours and what she was on. And if she even really wanted to do it or because this sex trafficking has crossed over into pornography. All of them ain't getting paid. That's exactly two, three, right. Four, twelve thousand dollars per exactly scene. Right. Some of them is forced into it. Right. That's exactly <laughs> and right. so there's a spirit and the energy there. So I would tell couples, absolutely not. Right. And I, for me, I, my eyes don't need to see nobody else's breasts, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I don't I'm, need I'm to sure see. I'm sure ain't about to look. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, so I would just say, get with that sex therapist, that counselor, to really help you all with a deeper level of intimacy. And I ain't gonna lie, man. I can't. I can't help but stress. Because so many guys are struggling with this topic, they kind of feel like they just on that, bust that nut, just the energy. But when you connect with the heart and the mind, bro, I was looking at my son the other day, my little boy, he's four, Jackson. I was like, man, it's a beautiful little boy. I looked at my wife, I said, man, you gave me him. It's like, you gave me my little boy, like you gave me my daughter. Like, she's so gorgeous. I'm just looking at my children like, so now, so now I'm looking at my wife differently now. I'm looking at her with the googly eyes. That's why I want to call her. That's why I want to text her when I land. That's why I want to follow up with her because there's a deeper connection. And so, so often we focus on that connection. When we focus on the heart, we focus on the mind. It heightens the sensitivity when you all are intimate and you all are connecting. So you're wondering, how can you be having sex with the same person year 10, year 15, year 20, year 25? You continue to connect with their heart. And now you feel like the longer you go, the connection, the bond is that much stronger. Think about it. You got some friends you've known for 10, 15 years. Y'all are so close. Y'all cannot talk for a year and then get back together and be, why? Because y'all got so much history together. And so I just feel like there has been a perverted view and we've all struggled with it because I was on that. I wanted to smash. I was getting my numbers up. Every week it was a different one in rotation, but that's when I was on some little boy stuff. Yep. When I began to realize my worth and value was deeper. Because truth be told, I found my value in cars, clothes, and women. Mm -hmm. How much money I had, how many I could smash, that's when I realized where I felt what my worth and my value was. So I was always chasing for more women because I wanted more love, and that's the problem. Why did I want all this love? Because when I was a little boy growing up, my mama had me when she was 16 years old. But she was in survival mode. Mm -hmm. She wasn't really ready to be that full nurturing mother. She was trying to provide for me. She's trying to get through school. Mm -hmm. And so there I grew up with a lacking and longing some of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking I'm just a Leo, just a playboy, just a womanizer. Nah, bro, I'm really looking for love. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking for connection. Mm -hmm. And so though I'm sleeping around, and it's, it got to a point where it didn't feel nothing. You know why my wife is my wife today? Because she didn't let me smash. When I saw that, it was just like, oh, Oh, I could build a life with you. I could build mm-hmm. business with you. Mm-hmm. You could be the mother of my children. Mm-hmm. You're not going to let me smash. Mm-hmm. You came to the crib. Bro, my crib was like a death trap for him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you came to my crib and you was like, no, nah, I'm good. I said, oh, you got value? You got virtue? Oh, that's a whole other level of sexy. And so I just had to get to a point where I was just like, man, I'm not even really on like smashing your body. I don't want to smash your heart. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, it's kind cool. of cool. It's, it's cool talking to y'all, brothers, because, you know, when... Y'all speak about your wives. I always kind of leave thinking, you know, the wives, they, one, don't, right. they don't sound so bad. <laughs> right. I, I might want one of them wives. Let me speak right. to Hold on now. I might want one of them wives. Let me tell the whole story. <laughs> okay, okay, let me, okay. Just, let, me, let, me, let me tell the whole... I want one of those. Yeah, let me, tell, <laughs> let me tell the whole story, though. Help me out, Crump. How did, how did Dr. Miles Monroe, the late great, he said, your wife is like land. It's like a field. And you're responsible for cultivating that land, for tilling that land, for planting those seeds, literally and figuratively, right? And really keeping the pesticides, keeping the rodents away, right? It's like, so, so for, for me, like, bro, my marriage has been very challenging. Like, I don't want to sit here and make it seem like, man, me and Mark have been married for 13 years. It's been amazing. We're having an amazing sex life. It has been a very rough journey because we was not on the same page. So to all the brothers that's listening, you might feel like, man, I can't really rock with Jay. I don't really get him. He don't get me. Nah, bro, I get you. Like, I was, bro, I was running two nightclubs, bro. I was selling weed by the pound. Like, I was making money, bro. Like, I had them coming in and out. And then I got to a point where I wanted more when I realized my worth and my value was deeper than that and what I could just dominate. And so then I get married to someone, and quite frankly, she's just not interested in sex like that. And that thing broke my heart for years. She didn't try to break my heart. She just grew up in a different world. She just viewed sex and intimacy different. And so it took a lot of counseling, a lot of therapy, a lot of times when I was doing work myself, going away to camps and retreats, doing like it took a lot for me to get here. 
But so this podcast is not for the lazy men. You that's feel right. me, Tim? Yeah, this right. is for those who are willing to do the work. Mm-hmm. But those of y'all that's like, that's not attainable, bro. That is attainable, bro. When I wake up in the morning, my breath be funky. What about you, Tim? Funky. Bro, don't you got insecurities, bro? <laughs> insecurities. Bro, we got challenges. We got insecurities. Challenges. Challenges. Like, bro, we out here trying to figure this thing out. That's right. We just got to a point where we said, okay, this is the one woman I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. I'm going to do everything within my uh, responsibility, within my power to be with this woman. Were there times when I wanted to leave my wife? When I felt like I deserved love? When I felt like I deserved better? I felt like I shouldn't be treated like this? I felt like, man, any woman would love to be with me. Do you realize how good you got it? Yeah, there was times when I had the energy because yep. I knew how dope of a husband I was. And I feel like, man, I was being crucified. I'm like, man, these are certain things I need. And I got to a point when I wasn't even focused on my needs. I was focusing on her needs. And God was like, but you got needs too, son. I wired you that way for love. I've given you that sex drive, right? And so you guys just have to work through it. So I just want all of our listeners to know and our viewers to know that it's, it was a process to get here. And it wasn't easy, but it's possible. And listen to me. If, I, if you believe anything I say, let me say this to you. It's worth it. It is worth it. It's worth it. It's, now, now, J.A., let me, let, let, let me add this. Because I feel like it's some, th- some brothers going to struggle, but I don't know if brothers got to struggle as much as they probably will struggle based on the selection, right? Mm. Because there was some incompatibility there. Mm. I don't want to say incompatibility, but some differences in their sex life. Now, we say let's be celibate, and we say don't let sex confuse our decision-making. But how do we measure sexual compatibility to make sure we can have a little bit more synergy in that area and we're not as surprised when on a honeymoon you're trying to smash and she's not feeling it? Not saying that was your situation, Mm -hmm. but just in general, how do we measure to make sure that if I got a high sex drive and this is somebody I want, I make sure that that's something that that, that I, you know, that I also select because I I think that would probably make the most sense for a man to look for that in his, in his woman. If that's important to him, would you, would you say so? Absolutely. And I think it goes to having a conversation. Let me tell you something, bro. If I could start over, my marriage would be on a whole nother level. The things I learned in year 10, 11, now 13, if I would have known that going in, I, I, would, I would have a different frame of reference because of what I've gone through and experienced. So I, I think it really boils down to a conversation. So for those of y'all that's like, man, all right, I'm going to try to stop smashing or I'm going to go into it. Because you, you're wondering, how can you really be celibate? All right, you didn't, you didn't let him smash or her smash, and then y'all get married and realize you're not compatible I don't even think there is even a thing when it comes to someone being incompatible if your hearts are there. May, may, may I? I want to ask it. a question. Yeah. Because um, I think this is, this is an important mm-hmm. thing to address. But I want to ask a question that you can answer mm-hmm. based on what you said uh, was challenging in your marriage. Do you think that if you had not been sexually promiscuous prior to marrying your wife that you still would have the big gap of incompatibility sexually no it 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 would it would completely if i wasn't and and bump being celibate if i wasn't a hot boy you what know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's what like I'm saying. Like, if I wasn't a hoe back in the that's, day. That's let's be clear. Saying. I hate it that's when cats make it seem like the women is hoes. Like, shoot, we be hoes too. Absolutely you know what correct. Saying? Absolutely if correct. I wasn't like that, I would have felt like we were way more compatible. You know what I'm saying? And so we, we came from two different worlds. And when it came to that type of experience, she wasn't out there, but I was all the way out there. So mm-hmm. this is, this, I'm grateful mm-hmm. for your vulnerability to mm-hmm. let us know that. Because Juliet was a virgin when we got married. Mm-hmm. I was not. Mm-hmm. And I was a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hoes at? You know what I'm <laughs> right here, right here. <laughs> and I was a good hoe. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Successful. <laughs> Successful. You I was, gotta break that down. I, I wanna like, know, yeah, break like down a good I, hoe. I was I was the hoe women appreciated. Mm, you was the gentle hoe. <laughs> I was the gentle hoe. <laughs> So I've always, I've always been an empath. No, I've always, no. I was a gentle. You can hoe. be a noble. Wow. You can be a noble hoe. Yeah. I was, a, <laughs> noble hoe. I, I was a noble hoe, right? <laughs> I've never heard those two words put together, so and now I'll never be able to unpair them. <laughs> so, so I was a noble hoe, <laughs> but I was a hoe. 
So coming into the marriage, yeah. I trained my body hmm. for a, ter- a certain type of sex hmm. with a certain type of cadence hmm. in a certain type of way. My wife had not been awakened sexually until we were married. Mm. Of course we were incompatible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how are y'all now, though? We on the same Come on. page. Come on. When I tell you same page, yeah. we're on the same page. So the question is valid. But the origin is very, very important where it's asked from. How do we know we're sexually compatible if we're not... If we don't have any sex, well, you shouldn't be having sex in the first place. Mm. That's number one. I know in this culture, y'all going to be like, that's impossible, nigga. Try again. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I said what I said. You shouldn't be having se- I said what I said, and I meant yeah. it. You shouldn't be having sex in the, in, in the first place. But if you have, please take that into consideration when you say you're incompatible. Mm. If you got 100 bodies and the other person has two, hell yeah, you're incompatible. Mm. You've put your body through an American Ninja Warrior obstacle course. <laughs> and the other person has been playing hopscotch. Mm-hmm. Of course you're incompatible. And I only want women that's playing hopscotch. Right, me too. But well, have I'm, y'all been on the obstacle course, though? Yeah, we, we're, we, oh. we like, we back-to-back champs. So hush. <laughs> so y'all done went all the way to the top and rung the bell. Right. Yeah, but you yeah. want somebody that's been playing patty cake in the playground. Yep. Yeah. That's stupid. No, no, that's no. a stupid thought. But see, because no, well, I don't. I disagree, because how the hell are two marathon runners going to somehow pair, bond? I gave you that cheat code earlier in, in in the pod. I told you you've given your body to a hundred people, but you haven't given them your heart. Because there's no way you you intimately gave emotionally the same thing you gave physically, and then ran to a new person. Can a woman do that? I don't think she can do that. What do you mean? I don't think a woman, you're right. I can, I can sling this wood with relentless effort without. <laughs> this nigga seems like Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> but but see, this God but, of but War? Let's, let's talk about <laughs> it. Let's talk about it. I can do that and my heart be completely sold separately. Women can do that too. I don't believe it. Oh, no. Tim, yeah, I don't believe it. Child, please. You bro, I don't believe it. Who you bro. been messing I with? Think the sa- bro, I don't believe it. Bro, it's the <laughs> savages. It's I guess, I guess, I guess it's you. The I guess. It's I guess. I, I guess you only on the but playground. See, but I don't think they can unsavage. Right. That's the thing. No, right. no, they can savage. But I, J A, you unsavaged. They can. You unsavaged. So what, you but you don't think a woman can unsavage? Nope. Oh yeah, well, you're Bro. nope. You're, 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 you're okay, wrong. then I need nope. you. To, I need so you, you to. I need you to change? Google ex porn stars that are married. The, I'm not gonna be the guinea pig. No, 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 no. no I, I, okay, I understand that, but but I want. I just want you because you y'all do research. Yeah. Please go research ex porn stars that are married, have families, Thanks. have that have unsavaged both genders, men and women. Like this well, is not okay, a so one sided so thing. So can a woman change? I would say yes, but that. Her even her changing doesn't affect my view of her after she's done those past things. And that's a problem. And that's a major problem. And it's like, oh, you got 10 bodies, oh, you a hoe. But then we got 20, 30, 100. It's just like, it's a double standard. The, but the, see, the, but the, you the, see, because here's the thing. Crazy. Crazy. You, you had some work that you had to do. Because of your home, you had some work you had to do, right? Right. I don't want all of us in here dealing with the same level of work. Like, don't get me wrong. I get we all going to bring different things to the relationship. We all going to have different things that we're going to be working on. And we all going to have our pros and we're going to have our cons. But I don't think that just because I made these decisions and choices means that now I have to be subject to taking, some, taking on the same workload. Oh, that no, type of pain. No, no, no. But well, see, well, my we just, wife. We, we you, just you, told you. We yeah. Just, we, but you might find somebody that's different from my wife. You could find somebody that maybe don't have the bodies, but it's com- more compatible. Like, that stuff will come. What we're trying to say is, is when you have love <laughs> in the mix and you're really connecting with their heart and their yeah. mind and God is in the mix, that compatibility, but he's the one that made that. He created sex. Like, yeah. he created our organs. Like, that's going to be blessed. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to worry about that. It's just more so the more bodies you have, the harder it's going to be to recalibrate only to this one person. But it is Agreed. definitely possible, hands down. Now, yeah, let me just I say as it. a scientific fact, based on what you just said about how, how do you know if you're compatible, uh, for hundreds of thousands of years in, in the evolutionary process, it has been certified by most sex therapists 
that a kiss usually tells uh, the majority of people hmm. if the if this is a compatible mate mm, or not. Wow. Yeah. Put your mm. tongue in their mouth, and wow. you gonna know if this if this good if this kiss is good. Whatever it, good is relative. Yeah. People like different types of kissing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If this kiss is good, this usually tells you. Mm. That the, the potential is there. Yeah. You do not have to put a penis in a vagina. You do not have to get head. You do not have to go down on her. You ain't got to do all this stuff. You ain't got to get a hand job. You ain't got to get all of your nuts off in, on the third date to be like, oh, yeah, I know she, I know she down now. No, stop playing. If you only want somebody that plays hopscotch then and, and you got 100 bodies, then don't be mad that she don't want to do nothing to you until, she, until you get married. If that's your requirement, I would respect that actually. Much we love did. and much respect. Mm -hmm. We did. <laughs> much love you and much respect. You know what I'm saying? Respect. So yes. that's what I'll say on that. Yeah, when I was a child, I thought I was a child. Ooh. When I became a man, I put away childish things. That's it. And so I feel like we all get to a point. Jeremy like, has called y'all a boy all the pod. We cut this shit out. No, that's what the Bible says. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying, no, when I first you. started, yeah, yeah, when I first, when I, when I first, you know, started in marriage, like, I was trying to find myself. And I didn't really, you know, know what I was doing. I was just trying to explore and connect. And over time, you know what I'm saying, me and Tracy begin to grow together. So I'm just saying it takes time. So to the average cat that's like, I don't really know if I'm cut out for this. It's like when you find the right one, you do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get those benefits on the back end. For sure. And it can be a very, very, very beautiful thing. And it's not going to happen right away. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't, you know, teams don't get franchises like in, in championships like right away. Like it takes time. It's like, okay, we made the playoffs this year. I'm going to get a little bit better every single year. Like that's how it is with marriage. But the idea of, are we compatible? Have I been with too many people? Once you connect with their hearts and their minds and you really want to build. Listen to me, bro. I was out in the streets, bro. I hadn't even given my life to Christ and I was tired of smashing. Like That's on big everything, facts. bro. That's like big I was, facts, bro. I was bro. still moving work, bro. Like yeah. I'm a VIP at the club. They collecting money at the door and I'm thinking like, I know she want to come to the crib. I'm really tired. I'm, I was over it, bro. Yeah. I was still out here in these streets and I was just like, man, I want somebody that really loved me for me. Not for my paper, not for what they heard about me. I want someone that can really love me for me. Mm -hmm. And so everybody gets to a point in their life when they like, man, I'm, I'm going to put this aside. I played. I had my time to play. And I realized after 30, 40, 50, 60, all right, let me settle down now and find someone who can really love me that I can really build with and I can spend the rest of my life with. And God, we trust God. Yes, now sir. And say, God, recalibrate something inside my brain. Recalibrate something inside my mind to where I only have eyes for this person. I only desire this person. I only want to love this person. I only want to share my body, my heart, my wealth with this one particular yes. person. And God will do that. Yeah, That's bro. why I say in order for you to have a successful marriage, you got to have a threesome. You, your spouse, and God. That's a winning combination. A three, four code. A three... Three fold weave. cord is not oh, easily yeah. broken. Yeah, guys, I, I got a special request for y'all because um, th last time, um, Jeremy, you, you came mm -hmm. after you asked if it was cool for you know you to pray with us. Yeah, and um, I just remember having a conversation that day with. I mean, literally the next day, Q actually cut all his dreads off and like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like he, you know, yeah, 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 he literally he cut turned, all his dreads he, off. He turned into Lonnie Walker the fourth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember, you know, I remember you, 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 you praying. You praying with us, and I just thought it was just a, it just was an out of body experience. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I, I had no idea that you know launching this this platform would bring that kind of blessing to us. Yeah. So if you could, because it is uh you know some people who follow us in our audience who are in unsuccessful marriages and they they really want to make a change and, and work work for it, you know. Mm -hmm. So could you could you guys end this out, close us out with a prayer? For sure. Is that cool? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's but, but, yeah, it don't matter. I, I'll go then. You the you the OG. You you close us out. Cool. Any other questions? We no, that's it. That's yeah, it. Let's pray. Right, let's get it. So, man, God, I'm so grateful that regular knuckleheads like us can continue <laughs> to come to you for um, sure. with our requests, Lord. No, I just pray for all the people listening and watching this podcast. I pray for all the marriages, for all the men that's tired, that's stressed, that's frustrated, mm. for all the wives that don't feel loved and cherished and valued by their husbands, Lord. I pray that you send them help. Yes, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they would get off this podcast, they would shut it down, and they will find a counselor, they will find a therapist, someone that they can build with their spouse with. 
And I pray, God, that their focus won't be what their spouse is doing and what they're not doing. May their focus be how can I serve and love my spouse the way that they need to be served and loved. God, I pray for healing. God, I pray for restoration. I pray for amazing sex yes, in their marriages, you, amazing Jesus. orgasms, connections of the hearts, the minds. I pray that you bless their union. Yes, yes. And for the people that's watching this, mm -hmm. that's like, man, I, I have found my value in men or in women. I have been chasing for people just to love me. And, and they're giving their bodies up to different women or to different men because they're looking for love. I pray, God, that they will really find you that you will give them peace, that you will be their sustainer, that you will give them joy. And when they are healed and whole, mm -hmm. may you bless them yes, Lord. with the relationship with someone else you, so that they can spend the rest of their life and have an amazing union that you created and designed. That's my prayer. Yes, In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God, thank you so much for this pod. Thank mm -hmm. you for giving us this opportunity to have hot talk, honest, open, and mm -hmm. transparent. Mm -hmm. God, I pray that seeds have been sown. I pray, Lord God, that we have watered some seeds that have previously been sown. But God, we're asking now that you get the increase. Mm -hmm. God, I, I lift up these hosts right now. I lift yes. up Tyshawn and, and Ryan. God, yes. I thank you so much for their lives. I thank you for their dedication to this pod and what they're doing. And God, as I told them offline, their hearts are open to you. They yes. are closer to God than they think. I pray, God, that with every conversation, God keeps coming up. I pray that with every pod and every episode, you keep showing yourself strong to them. Yes. And as they uh, acquire success, Lord God, and the benefits of that success, Holy Spirit, you said in your word that it is with loving kindness have we been drawn. Mm. So it's not about catching vapors. It's not about going to hell. It's not about getting beat up by God. But through the blessings, that's how you show us that you love us and call us out of darkness into your marvelous light. I pray for every person that has viewed this pod, and I ask you to help them be who you have called them to be for your glory None of our credit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Damn. Yeah. Woo Needed that. That was good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that was good. That was what good. a way to connect. Oh, <laughs> I appreciate y'all, brothers. Close us out, Ty. Close us out. I appreciate y'all, brothers. Thank y'all so much yeah. for coming out to the platform here. You already know. This has been absolutely phenomenal. Amen. Never could love you too, man. Yeah. Never, never ever ended the, the podcast like that, but that's My probably God, the best way we could have ever done it. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Hardly Initiated. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because the heat will not stop. Facts. And listen, Hardly Initiated, we are out.